What's up guys and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Dave and I'm a photographer and videographer from the Bay Area of California. Recently, I had posted a series of photos on my social media that I had developed at home and scanned at home and put into Lightroom and using Negative Lab Pro, converted those negatives into positives, edited my photo and uploaded it, which is a pretty involved process just to get that photo. But I've been developing at home since about 2018. I have had varying degrees of success in the methods that I've used. I used to develop stovetop and then from that scan on an Epson scanner, convert it in Photoshop using curves and you know everything that I know how to do in Photoshop to make my negatives and I never loved my photos. Nowadays, my process is a little more sophisticated. I still develop in my kitchen sink, but I use a Cinestill heater and for scanning, I use this rig here, which is my old A7R3 with a Sigma 70 millimeter macro lens and then this whole rig by negative supply. Which by the way, none of these companies are sponsors of this video. This is purely my process, my take, and how I use this stuff. So I use all this to scan and then I get that negative in Lightroom and I use Negative Lab Pro to flip that negative into a positive. And Negative Lab Pro is an incredibly efficient way to do this, way better than the process I did during my Photoshop days. But it's a pretty rare day when I just do a conversion and I'm like, great, that's it. That's Portra, that's gold, that's Cinestill. Now, I always typically have some things I do to edit that to get it where I want it that represents what I believe the film stock is supposed to look like, as well as represents the colors and tonalities that I like to use. When I first started using Negative Lab Pro, I had a really hard time with it because I would convert my images and then really not know where to begin to make it look like the film stock. When you convert these negatives, the software is doing its best to give you a very good conversion, but I always found it to be too punchy or too red or magenta or too saturated. Just something was always off and I really wasn't sure as to what the film was supposed to look like even though I've shot and developed a lot of film over many years you still get a little confused about like, okay, I'm shooting gold 200, what is gold supposed to look like? Or Portra, is Portra supposed to be all pastel-y or should it look more true to life? So I hopped on the Facebook groups for Negative Lab Pro as well as other film developing Facebook groups and chatted with people who have beautiful photos and I tried some of their things and some worked out, some didn't. Some people are editing in like a log profile, others are using like a lab profile. There's really a ton of options in software like this to dial in your look. So where I ended up landing in all this was I found some settings that honestly were super universal and they worked for me on any color film that I was using. Like I feel it's the right amount of contrast and the right amount of saturation. And the only thing I really tweak now that I have all these settings dialed in is the white balance per photo to make it look right as to what I believe the film stock is supposed to look like. I've shared these settings with some close friends of mine, but today I'm gonna share them with you because you might be scanning with Negative Lab Pro and having similar issues where you're like, okay, what is this supposed to look like? And then how do I make it look like mine? And I just wanna just add real quick, that's supposed to look like is super subjective because at the end of the day, it can look like anything you want it to look like. There's so much variety. You could take the same roll of negatives like I've got right here. <laughs> send it off to a dozen labs and have a dozen different scans that look a little different. I have found some labs over the years that look incredible and some that look awful. And then doing it at home where I can have full control, I wanna make sure mine look incredible and not awful. So let's go ahead and dive into Lightroom. I'm gonna open up Negative Lab Pro and show you guys my settings. And then we're gonna copy and paste those settings across some other photos and I'll show you how they transfer and then the process I go through to get them all dialed in. Okay, so what you're seeing here is just the conversion in Negative Lab Pro with no settings. It's just converted using the Frontier because I like to use the Frontier color mode on 35 millimeter and I use the Noritsu color mode on 120. And you can see here that this photo, while it doesn't look bad at all, 
It's a little cool in its tone. For me, it's it's nice looking and it looks like film, but it doesn't have the look that I would expect if I got a really high-end lab to scan my Kodak Gold 200 on a Frontier. I don't think it would look like this. So now I'm gonna show you the settings that I use to dial it in. So I hit paste and I'm gonna walk you through all of these, but let's we'll come back to that in just a second. Let's go ahead and look at the photo now. This looks more true to what I would expect Kodak Gold 200 to look like and what a pleasing lab scan would look like. So again, we're gonna go from here to here. All right, so let's talk through the different settings. Up here at the top, I just use Negative Lab Pro Standard. I don't use anything of their presets. I just have it on the standard. The tone profile that I use is Lab Soft. Now let me show you what standard is, and I want you to look at the histogram here. The histogram is a bit wider here, meaning that we get more black and more white information, but when you go to soft, you're narrowing the histogram a little bit, which fades the blacks a little and smooths out the highlights some. I think the soft look is more of what I'm going for when I shoot film. I don't need pure white, I don't need pure black because those things don't exist in real life and they definitely don't exist in film. Now let's go down all of my light settings. I keep exposure at zero. I bring the brightness down, negative 10, negative 11, somewhere in there. I use brightness to compensate for the increase in darks. I also bring the whites and blacks down because that brings contrast to a more realistic point for what I believe the film is supposed to look like. I use Lab Glow to smooth out those highlights even further because again, that's kind of what film is known for, the smoothness of the highlights and how much information is there. And I use Lab Fade on the negative side because I don't want to increase any additional lower contrast in the shadows and the darks. I just want it to feel nice and punchy on the bottom end. There's already no blacks in my image if you look at the histogram, so I'm not gonna fade those and further push up the low end into a faded look. I turn both the white clip and the black clip down a little bit, which all of this is really just bringing the light tonality to where it needs to be. And now let's talk about color tonality, and we're gonna do all this before we look at the white balance. I personally find the colors that automatically show up when we convert negatives in Negative Lab Pro to be off a little bit. And these settings, I feel like, bring that nice, warm Kodak look. And again, I'm mostly shooting Kodak. I really don't shoot Fujifilm very much. If you are a Kodak shooter, you're gonna find, I think, these settings work really well. So what I've got here is a shift in the color spectrum in the shadows. I'm doing negative 11 here, negative six here and then seven towards yellow, and that range at 10. The highs, I'm leaving as they are because I trust the highlights of the film here. And then I'm making an adjustment in the mids as well, just to get that color tonality where I think it needs to be. And then it's really just a matter of sliding the white balance wherever I might need it to be to get the image to look right. I have the HSL on lab, saturation at five, and sharpen leaving it as it is. So when I apply that, this ends up being the look. Now let's go over here to an actual negative and we're gonna convert it. Frontier, three, I'm gonna convert this negative. And you can look here at the histogram and it's got a ton of information and data, which is great. If I paste those settings though, just as those settings are, this is what I would expect to get just from Kodak Gold 200. Now with a photo like this, I might go in and brighten it up a little more to compensate for all those shadows or perhaps just raise the darks. I'm not really sure, I would have to tweak it a little bit, but for the most part, we're pretty dialed in already. Okay, so now let's take a look at a portrait shot that I shot in the Dolomites this past summer. I'm gonna go ahead and convert this. We're gonna open up Negative Lab Pro, convert it on the Frontier because this is 35. And right here, again, you see there's a lot of data right here in the histogram, but when we look at this, like this isn't how Portra looks. And also forgive my messy negative here. There's a lot of junk on this negative. I probably need to scan it again. I'm gonna paste these settings and already this photo is on its way to becoming better. Now it was a touch underexposed when I shot it. So just looking at my histogram, I'm not even looking at the photo. I'm just gonna watch the histogram and kind of get a little more data in here. And already that's looking better, but the tone is not quite right yet. So I'm gonna pull back the magenta, 
maybe even cool it off a little bit because this wasn't quite a golden hour photo. It was just a little before golden hour. So it doesn't need all of that warmth in it. And just by pasting those settings, and again, we haven't touched how I've tweaked the shadows or the mids. And again, we've left the highlights alone. We've only really adjusted some basic light using the brightness and we've adjusted the white balance. So nothing too crazy here. And already you can see the difference in how this photo looks a little more accurate to what you would expect if you're shooting that film stock. And let me just interrupt myself real quick to say that if you find this kind of material helpful, be sure to subscribe to this channel. I drop two videos a week. Some are philosophical, some are technical, and some are gear, but they're all, I hope, inspirational and helpful. So be sure to subscribe if you're watching today. Take a look at this one because this is a very crunchy photo. You can see just Negative Lab Pro's immediate conversion looks a little crunchy. The tones are definitely off a little bit. And if you look at the histogram, we've got the RGB channels are pretty wild. I'm gonna paste my settings on there. And again, we're not perfect. We need to white balance a touch. Also, just given the tonality of this photo, I also like to lower the contrast pretty often, and I might bring contrast back in other areas, like bringing the darks down in addition to lowering the contrast, but compensating for that using the darks. This is a much less crunchy photo, much flatter, which gives me a starting point if I wanna make further tweaks to the JPEG, but I mean, just from where we were to this feels really good to me. Here's a photo of my wife and kids on the Greek island of Patmos. We're looking out at the Aegean Sea. This is a very crunchy photo that's very blue. I'm gonna paste my settings over it and already it's much warmer. I'm gonna bring the brightness up a touch, but I like that. Just touching the brightness kind of brought it where I would want it. It might be a touch on the warm side. I'll cool it off a little bit, but already that is a much more pleasing image to me. It doesn't have all that contrast and heaviness in the photo. Here's just like a normal picture in Santa Cruz on Portra 400. Again, you see the histogram has a wide range of information and you can see the photo here just directly from Negative Lab Pro. I paste my settings on there and it's already just so much more true to what it needs to be. I'm gonna white balance this by just making it a touch less green, maybe cool it off just a little, but that just looks so much more pleasing to my eyes. Okay, I could do this all day long. These settings I feel like really work well in Negative Lab Pro for scanning Kodak film. And at the end of the day, this is all subjective. So what I like is gonna be different than what you like. But if you're struggling to find a starting point in your tones, especially on Kodak scans, give these settings a try and see how they work for you. You might find that they're super helpful for giving you a good starting point that you can fine tune how you like. But if you just wanna copy them and use them, go right ahead. I mean, they're just settings, so they're not like overly complicated. I hope you find this video to be helpful for your workflow if you're scanning negatives at home. And if you do find it helpful, be sure to like. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe. And again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.